Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In this powerful message, Freedom from Financial Captivity, Apostle Joshua Selman reveals the path to financial liberation. He explained the secrets to attract wealth and also the divine strategies to unlock abundance. Learn how biblical principles can transform your financial life. Discover the secrets to attracting wealth and breaking free from financial limitations. Unlock the keys to financial freedom and experience God's prosperity, revealing the secrets to attracting wealth and living in financial freedom. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says we are his workmanship. You want to understand that scripture? You have to look at someone who is a professional, a craftsman, when the Bible says we're his workmanship, that means the tool that he uses, whether it's a, a carpenter's workmanship, is his saw, and all the things that he uses. So when the Bible says we are his workmanship, it means every time God wants to make a statement, he looks around until he finds you. Then he does something to your life that lifts you like a trophy. I declare that God is announcing someone. It may look to you like I'm just making an empty statement, but in the name of Jesus, I declare, my God, I don't know about your God, but my God will announce you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for those who are about giving up wondering, is God really alive? Because it looks like I've prayed, it looks like I'm, I've fasted. It looks like I've, I've opened up my heart, but I'm yet to see the manifestation of God. Let me tell you the truth. When God begins with you, when God begins to honor you, it will be non-stop honor and victory. Non-stop honor and victory. In the name of Jesus. For many years, Anna cried for a child, but when Samuel came, Samuel was the one who anointed the kings in Israel. I'm praying for you. While you are crying for a child, may God give you a nation. In the name of Jesus. We are here, Lord, because we believe you. You never call the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. We have come with our hearts opened. We pray in the name of Jesus, let the devil be put to shame over our lives tonight. In the name of Jesus, let us see once again the manifestation of your victory in our lives. We open up our hearts to receive tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. week after week let me announce to you that something is happening in your life the bible says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear hallelujah you must carry this consciousness that every time i come before the lord something is happening to my spirit man something is happening to my mind and that means something is happening to everything around me in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as always i will encourage you to be very attentive to the word this is the part of the service that the devil does not like because the entrance of his word gives light and the bible declares that it gives understanding to the simple and so when the word of god is about to come all kinds of demonic distractions begin it is your responsibility to insist that I will concentrate, I will open up my heart and my spirit to hear. Hallelujah. It is always the hearing of faith and the working of miracles. The hearing that produces faith and the working of miracles. The only channel 
the only platform for communicating bible faith is the word of god it means outside of an encounter with the word of god the believer cannot have the faith that produces hallelujah more than the information you will be hearing it's important to realize that the word of god carries with it an impartation the holy spirit is not moving around this wonderful auditorium and across everyone listening for nothing when his word comes with his word is his spirit bringing performance and bringing confirmation to his word the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following may that be your testimony in the name of jesus i came tonight with a very strong burden a very strong burden that has become an assignment from the lord and oftentimes when god wants to plant compassion in me or holy anger if i would use that expression usually he will make reference to one of the many visions that he's given me something i don't know if it's if it's just a unique experience but something happens to me every time the lord brings to memory any of my visionary encounters it seems to plant and refire faith in me again and it looks like it's a strategy that he uses so that you can have a taste of the burden that is on his heart as far as releasing god's people in whatever area of concern um you know and so it it started even before we went to zaria and it was such a strong burden and that burden has translated to the teaching that you'll be hearing tonight and so let me request that you please lend me your attention tonight is a very prophetic service hallelujah very prophetic service that means many things will be created in your life that means many things that were not there are on their way coming it means many unwanted things in your life must be rooted out in the name of jesus christ hallelujah freedom from financial captivity hmm. luke chapter 4 don't think this is a financial service at all this is a prophetic i told you already beforehand we have a series coming as we always do and i'll be doing a lot of extensive teaching but tonight the lord is coming with a rod and coming with fire you will learn a lot of things but there are definite things that the lord wants to do in our lives tonight and for someone your prayer and fasting is about to be answered because you have said god when will you visit me not knowing that while you were on your way to church as you left home you also left shame as you left home you also left reproach as you left home you left your yesterday and may it never come to your life again in the name of jesus christ for some of you as you left home you left the generational curse that has held everybody loving the lord but living in poverty loving the lord but living in all kinds of reproach no beauty and color in your life in the name of jesus i stand representing the king of kings i declare that circle is broken once and for all that circle is broken once and for all that circle is broken once and for all and for someone here that you have carried upon your forehead like Cain the statement written in cupboard that everywhere you go it becomes clear that it's like your lot is a reproach in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we wipe away that mark from off you for a man of God here for a church for a business for a family it looks like everything has worked except these finances and you are wondering what is the key what have we done wrong in the name of jesus christ may my god surprise you please be seated and now lend me your attention luke chapter 4 and verse 16 by the way let me take a minute to celebrate a dear man of god 
venerable ike all the way from onicha let's bless him with the anglican communion bless you sir it's an honor to have you around may god bless you may god bless you please be seated luke chapter 4 and verse 16 luke 4 from verse 16 the bible says and as he came to nazareth jesus now where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and the bible says he stood up for to read verse 17 and there was delivered unto him i'm seeing the hands of people just catching fire this is what i'm seeing the hands of people catching fire this is a manifestation of the spirit of poverty over many families it may not be for everybody but everyone who is represented in this vision in the name of Jesus Christ whatever has tied your hand or that of your loved ones I hope you are not here just for yourself you are also here it's as for me and my family I declare let that fire burn to ashes let that fire burn to ashes let that fire burn to ashes everything that is not the planting of God in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated let's continue the Bible says there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written 18 the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor what did he send me to do to the poor to preach the gospel the word poor there is also translated meek when you read isaiah's rendition of it he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted i like the next verse the next sentence to preach deliverance to the captives deliverance is not only conducted it is preached to preach deliverance that means there is something the captive needs to hear that releases the power of God and translates to victory and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised 19 it says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord 20 now the Bible says he closed the book and he gave it to the minister and he sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him in other words if you claim that this is why you are here then we are watching we are lending you our attention the last verse now 21 says and he began to say unto them this day someone prophesy say this day yeah. it will not be next week it will not be tomorrow he said this day is this scripture now you see he said many things there it is the assignment of your faith to choose the one that must manifest he says this day is this scripture whatever this scripture means for you this scripture fulfilled in your ears hallelujah two visions very quickly and then I'll begin to teach the first vision that the Lord brought back to my mind that inspired this teaching this prophetic service tonight was the vision that would open me up to his call upon my life I have shared it a thousand times but I want you to pay attention I would just cut straight to the point because we have a lot to do so I was standing up a building like an elevated like a story building and i saw an endless sea of people in that vision it was a whole generation in that vision and the ones in front of me as the the the, the picture kept zooming they began to cry and i remember very clearly they said there's no food and there's no water and then i said who is the cause and they all pointed in unison unanimously I said why would I do that no food and no water and he says who is the cause and they pointed to me and I said no I would not do that then I had an assignment to deliver those people but I was afraid because in that vision it looked like some people had chased me into that closet but I made up my mind that I was going to go out all the same I said if I perish like Esther I perish as soon as I opened the door I met this giant gray bearded man that I know now 
is a representation of the Holy Spirit and he stretched his hands and I stretched back my tiny hands and placed it on him and he said I will walk with you and then we began to move moving from one building to the other on our way down that's the vision number one and you know for a long time when you see that you would think it's just spiritual food and spiritual water alone but I believe that it is all encompassing whatever food represents food represents the basis for nourishment and sufficiency hallelujah so when i teach topics like this i'm not teaching as an advisor there is an anointing and a mantle that came are we together to teach what i am teaching number two in that vision i was standing ready to serve god's people and there was a machine you know very strangely the machine was mixing bread with honey and my assignment was to just cut a piece and serve the people automatically it was not me mixing it the machine you know how you put jam or blue band in between the bread it was doing it on its own and that machine you could not even see the end of it my assignment was just to stand it would churn out bread mixed with honey dripping honey from the bread it was dripping to the ground and people would taste of it and run and join the queue again I know I saw that happen many times and there was no such thing like you've been here before don't come again people would eat and run and they were calling their loved ones and saying come and the queue started elongating elongating and people were taking the bread and honey some will run back and stand on the queue others will have their loved ones come to join bread and honey listen ladies and gentlemen there are people who teach finances because of their passion to release people from lack and want and poverty and that is wonderful there are people who teach finances because they had an opportunity to study along the lines of finances and they are bringing their value and serving the body of Christ or serving you know society generally and that is profitable there are others who have become professionals by reason of their exposure to you know financial institutions and they feel that they have something to say but there are people who have been mandated with a mantle upon their head are we together now and god has given them an assignment among the many other things is to open the eyes of people so that they will see when you sit under this anointing and under those kinds of people i guarantee you regardless your experience if your heart is opened you will watch the wonder walking god lift you out of financial shame and reproach and may this be that night for you in the name of jesus i have watched with sadness the limiting effect of being poor or financially incapacitated i know it like you know that it has affected preachers it has affected families listen carefully it has affected ministries it has affected nations it has affected government finance is one of the number one sponsors for compromise of character many people today who otherwise would have been worthy representations models for generations they survived every other temptation but they could not stand finances are we together now judas is carried survived every other thing but when it came to the money issue he felt like a pack of card in fact one of the principal areas that would have brought embarrassment to the ministry of jesus was the issue of finances he was teaching doing the things that he was doing and the tribute collectors came and they began to embarrass him you claim to be a teacher of righteousness but you are owing the government you have not been able to pay your tax and that was a statement that would indict and embarrass him and put a stain upon his ministry and jesus did something immediately to remedy that situation hallelujah among the many things that we were given as far as redemption is concerned is access to the blessing and the blessing of the lord translates to all kinds of good things including freedom and deliverance from poverty this poverty thing is a very serious thing because while we have those who talk about it like an obsession 
very few have been able to profess solution and we have those who have avoided it and done so to their detriment so we always have two groups of people when it has to do with the subject of poverty and finance we have those who are overly obsessed it looks like everything in their lives everything as far as the communication of teachings and sermons is centered around money 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 and and that's the end of it then we have those who shy away from it using all kinds of religious guys and just say it does not matter god will find a way of sorting you you just love god and many have done that for many years and now are only left with tears and shame let god be true and all men liars i'm saying it again i made a covenant with god that i will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant your spiritual vibrancy is my number one assignment but not my only assignment according to genesis 17 and verse 6 this is a word that i have received in my spirit for you it says and i will make thee exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee it says and kings shall come out of thee there is no room for weakness and mediocrity by the way let me tell you you can prosper and serve god with the dignity of kingdom integrity if you fall by the wayside in serving god it is not the presence or absence of money it is something about the condition of your heart are we learning already now let's start very quickly it's a prophetic service we have a proper series that i'm going to be taking and we'll have the time it's a three-part series we'll deal with it extensively across boards but tonight i just want to open us up to a few things and respond to that burden that god has put in my heart let's define a few things because you will be surprised how many believers are failing financially simply because they do not even understand what they are dealing with the average believer has not paid attention to this subject are we together now I want to define five terminologies very quickly and please I want you to write both in your heart and then on your notes number one let's define prosperity what exactly is prosperity It's a word that seems to carry pungency for many in the body of Christ once they hear the word prosperity they say don't don't bring me as part of that word and for others that looks like the only thing they see in the Bible prosperity what exactly is prosperity the word prosper means to do well simple in the simplest expression the word prosper please write it down it means to do well the word prosper means to excel so prosperity in its in its um in its purest definition has nothing to do with money hallelujah when i was teaching on the power to get wealth you can get the teaching and listen to it i taught you if you recall that in the kingdom there are five levels of prosperity are we still together and that when the believer approaches the subject of prosperity you do not approach it like one who is an unbeliever there are five levels of prosperity and god expects and insists that you prosper in all five areas for you to truly be prosperous the kingdom's way number one very quickly in order of priority is your spiritual prosperity i'm just doing a recap to guide our understanding again number two mental prosperity number three bodily prosperity your health and vitality number four financial prosperity now your financial resources and then number five relational prosperity these are the five areas that the believer must prosper in if you do not prosper in all five areas based on the kingdom's definition of prosperity you are not prosperous let me repeat again spiritual prosperity the health of your spirit man your passion and your drive towards god the health of your prayer life your word study life your passion for the things of god number two mental prosperity your mind properly developed and deployed are we together now number three your health and wellness i don't need to tell you again that no matter how wealthy you are in terms of finance if something happens to your body all of that will remain like ashes 
if you die your money does not go with you you are buried naked and if you if they cloth you all those clothes would turn to ashes and dust eventually and all that will be left at the bones of whoever no name doesn't matter are we together now then financial prosperity then finally relational prosperity so in the kingdom you are only said to be prosperous if we can see captured in your life these five dimensions of prosperity let's define the next terminology very quickly riches please write that word down what does the bible refer to as riches hallelujah please write riches simply means abundant financial resources riches abundant financial resources abundant financial resources now in ancient times they didn't use money like we use so whatever it is that represented money for them in those days if you had abundance of it you were believed to be rich whether it was cattle whether it was um, gold whether it was whatever it is riches in our world now would be defined as abundant financial resources number three wealth this is a very key definition there is a big difference between wealth and riches while riches is concerned with abundant resources wealth has to do with the systems that guarantee the continuity of those resources there is a big difference between riches and wealth let me define wealth for you now please write wealth is abundant financial resources plus the systems that guarantee replenishing the difference between a rich person and a wealthy person is one person has abundant financial resources that can come through whatever means including inheritance but a wealthy person has financial abundant resources and has in place systems that guarantee replenishing so for a wealthy person there is a way to perpetuate wealth are we learning now so when we say you are rich it means whether by inheritance or by whatever means godly of course we're speaking as believers you have access even if it's for a short time to financial resources but when we talk about a wealthy person don't forget you have abundance of financial resources alongside systems that are put in place so you can see by this definition that there might be many people who are rich but truly very few people who are wealthy this explains the whole balloon success where people are up today down tomorrow because most times in our world we interpret wealth wrongly once you have abundance of financial resources whether it came by corruption whether it came by stealing whether it came by fraud we just believe that you are wealthy no wealth has to do with the presence of abundant financial resources plus the systems that guarantee continuity are we together the fourth definition very quickly poverty I know you don't want to write it but just write poverty <laughs> someone is already saying god forbid it's not with my hand out right we are defining poverty what exactly is poverty are you ready poverty refers to the absence the absence of financial resources the absence of financial resources and then the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity the absence of financial resources number one then the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity this is the definition of poverty so if your definition of poverty is only limited to the absence of money or financial resources you did not define it well it is both the absence of the substance finance and the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that is required to be productive is someone learning already one last time that poverty 
refers to the absence of financial resources and then the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity let's define lack you will be surprised now to know that there is a difference between lack and poverty the same way there is a difference between riches and wealth now lack talks of insufficiency lack talks of insufficiency inadequate resources to meet your needs especially when required hallelujah someone in lack may not necessarily be poor the problem of someone in lack is not the absence of financial resources it is that when you suffer from lack you almost always do not have the financial resources when needed it may eventually come but at the point where it is needed it is almost not there you see that many people are not poor but many people are in lack and i taught you when i was teaching the power to get wealth that one of the advantages listen carefully the advantages of uh, one of the advantages of financial um prosperity or abundant resources is that it is available when needed if it is not available to solve the problem then it is of no use are we together say for instance you need x amount of naira or dollars to solve a medical situation that is life-threatening say for instance you need just for let's say a million naira to solve a medical situation that that person may die without it and now you are not a poor person at one point or the other money comes but at the point where it is needed it is not there no matter how you convince yourself you are in luck hallelujah if the person dies and hundred million comes in next week you are still in luck you see that the goal is not to be in luck the goal is to have supplies that provide for sufficiency when needed when needed the person who has 500 naira that always appears at the point of the need will be more effective than someone who is anticipating a hundred million and may wait 10 20 years you you can see people who can beg and suffer and cry and say please someone help me but when you trace their overall financial system there may be some money hanging somewhere that they are still trying to walk around i'm telling you that if at the point of need the resources to meet that need is not there it is called lack hmm. hallelujah so prosperity to do well riches to have abundant financial resources wealth to have riches plus the systems that perpetuate it and allow for continuity poverty the absence of financial resources and the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity and then for lack we say is insufficiency in one word that means when you suffer lack you almost are never able to meet your needs when required this is very very powerful hallelujah but since my focus is on poverty tonight, I'd like us to go straight to the point. What are the factors responsible for poverty? Please write. Because the Bible says to preach deliverance to the poor. What are the factors? What are the factors responsible for poverty? For many people, especially in the body of Christ, the moment the subject of poverty comes, it is just to pray against it or pray against spirits and so on and so forth. And while that is important, it is important for us or more important to really examine. And there are seven factors that I wrote here. You will be surprised. Seven factors. Anybody who lives with these factors at work in their lives must be poor, no matter who you are. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? And anybody who gets free from these seven factors must be wealthy. It has not, there's no sentiments. Please try to believe what I'm telling you. 
hallelujah so whilst you are listening to this some of you in your mind you will be looking at your life introspectively you will be looking at your families and wonder so my sincere father my sincere mother my sincere lineage as sincere as they are this is what was responsible for the poverty most times people just desire to you know manifest the blessings to prosper and superstitiously they just hope that one day by a way I cannot explain I will suddenly stumble into wealth no it is deception and unfortunately even though respectfully so men of God sometimes we are promoters of these kinds of wrong ideologies so people continue to hope on nothing holding shadows and after many years of frustration they succumb to the temptations of compromise and so on and so forth to preach deliverance to the captives are you ready for this seven please do not forget this for as long as you are alive in the name of Jesus Christ the factors responsible for poverty this is true for Abuja this is true for Lagos true for Nigeria true for any part of Africa true for America Europe wherever these are universal factors number one what is the first reason the first factor that is responsible for poverty my emphasis is the poverty of the saints believers in Christ in as much as this message is relevant and cuts across religion culture my emphasis in this service tonight is to help make a contribution that brings believers for God's sake out of this demon this captivity called poverty number one ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system this is the first reason for poverty in the body of Christ please write it and pay attention ignorance or incomplete knowledge please if you're writing underline ignorance and underline incomplete knowledge ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system this is the first reason why believers even though they have come into Christ are not able to manifest the blessing of the kingdom that we claim to have I have preached again and again against ignorance that ignorance is dangerous and then to my mind equally dangerous is incomplete knowledge when people have incomplete knowledge the equations will always not add up because incomplete knowledge is the sponsor of imbalance hallelujah when your knowledge is not holistic as touching a subject you will find yourself doing the best you know with what you know but what you know may not be enough to give you what you desire ignorance and incomplete knowledge I give you an instance when you sample an average believer in the body of Christ and ask the person what does it take to be blessed for someone he will say anointing for another person he will say seed for another person he will say tight for another person he will say forget about that tight it's a scam for someone else is going to say work hard that's the key hmm. hallelujah for someone else you will say do business for someone else you say meet a financial counselor all of these seem to be pieces of the truth but having a piece of the truth may not be enough to produce that result so ignorance or incomplete knowledge ask a man of God respectfully speaking sir how do you raise money for ministry and you will hear all kinds of things the good the bad and the ugly sincerely come and ask members to give you money somebody will say bring in someone who will help you raise the money another person will say identify all the rich people and wear them until preach that scripture cry yet saying you know thus said the lord <laughs> through prosperity and so on and so forth and then of course to the more extremes like manipulation and witchcraft and all kinds of things ask an average unbeliever in nigeria what is the easiest way to make money money ritual it's as simple as that they will answer you no matter how dull they are they will answer you immediately and say listen if all else fail 
just find a goat or a child or a human being be on your way to any place you know where they can conjure all kinds of things and if you think this message is not important wait until the gates of poverty press at you you will be surprised at the level and the shades of compromises that you'll be involved with this is true for preachers this is true for parents this is true for families this is true for leaders true for organizations especially churches right from covid because of what happened globally you know there seems to have been a decline and i submit to you that many churches many individuals many organizations have gone through seasons of financial strain and for many they have not recovered till now ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system there are two reasons why Jesus wept in the Bible the first is found in John 11 35 when he stood at the grave of Lazarus the Bible says Jesus wept and the next verse would say that when they saw him weep they said oh how he loved him so he wept because of his compassion for John the second reason why Jesus wept in the Bible is found in Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 and 42. He wept because of the ignorance of the people. The Bible says when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, 42, If thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong to your peace, he says but now they are hid from your eyes so Jesus wept when he saw people like sheep without a shepherd and he knew that these people will continue to wallow in darkness ignorance and incomplete knowledge of God's financial system are we ready for the second number two the second reason why men and especially the saints are in financial captivity is i wrote here the absence of value that is needed and useful please write that down the absence of value that is needed and useful not just the absence of value the absence of value that is needed and useful there is a clamor for value in the body of Christ and that is wonderful except that you need to understand that the value you present must be needed and useful if the value is not needed and useful most likely you will still remain poor even though valuable so the narrative before now is that once you are valuable there seems to be a guarantee that you will prosper i submit to you by wisdom honesty and the word that that is not accurate there are many valuable people who are poor and sadly may remain so do you know why because the world around them does not need the value that they are providing value must coincide with the law of exchange for reward to happen that means no matter what you are carrying if i do not need what you are carrying for instance if you come to me and you say apostle i want to sell for you baby serilac for me now it's valuable but not valuable for me are we together and if i am your only client get ready to be poor you, 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 you get what I'm saying now. Now, that does not mean that baby product is wrong. Simply because you are now surrounded by an individual who does not need what you're carrying. So there are many people who just believe that I am valuable. Unfortunately, their region, their, their, their clientele does not need the value that they are providing. If you are a professional typist, for instance, chances are excellent that by now, you may be tending towards poverty if that is the only value you have to offer why because time has shifted people and made your value not needed hallelujah if your only value is to teach people basic computer appreciation chances are excellent you are going to be poor because even people in the village now with an android device they have learned the things people used to queue in business centers to learn am i am i right on that the second reason why the saints are poor is that in bringing value to the table 
I'm buttressing on point two. They do not pay attention to those around them. That means there is no intelligent problem analysis. They just come up with any value and hope that people, whether they need it or not, will patronize them. Are we together? That means if your value is not solving any direct problem that suits the context of your civilization, you are going to be poor. It's as simple as that. Number three, is someone learning? The third reason why God's people especially are in financial captivity is lack of productivity and excellence. Please write it down. I didn't give you a scripture reference for number two. You may want to quickly write this down. Matthew 25 from verse 24 to 27. There is the reference. Remember the three people, talents. He gave one five. He gave one um, two. He gave one one. But the other one was called wicked and unprofitable. Hallelujah. So number three lack of productivity and excellence this is a very important one because this even affects people who are valuable lack of productivity do you know what productivity is please look up let me define for you in simple terms what productivity is productivity is the ability to translate your value into products and services are we together that are packaged and served to a targeted consumer base with excellence that is productivity you are not productive if you are valuable you are not productive if you have refined your value until your value is packaged into products and services that are served with excellence to a targeted consumer base if that does not happen you are not productive you may be valuable but not productive the third reason why believers are poor is lack of productivity and excellence. In Daniel chapter 5, let's read 12 to 14. Daniel chapter 5. The Bible speaking about this gentleman called Daniel. It says for as, an, as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding interpreting of dreams showing of hard sentences dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belshazzar now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation this is not just a man I hope you know that there were many dreamers but there was something about this this gentleman called Daniel he added excellence to his value the Bible says and then was Daniel brought up before the king. Follow carefully now. And the king spake and said, Daniel, art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? 14. I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in you. Now, I don't have the time to read further. I would have shown you that it took more than the ability to interpret the dream for the king to hear Daniel. His composure, his understanding protocol. He kept quiet and allowed the king to speak. And when it was time, he said, Oh, king, I respect you, but please let your gift be kept. He told the king, My value is greater than your gift don't bait me with gift have your reward to yourself nevertheless I will interpret it I am more concerned with problems than money and the rewards he later got was greater than what the king gave him because if he had collected this that's what most people would do so it takes more than being valuable you need to be excellent and excellence would demand rejecting certain temporary rewards to get other nobler and superior rewards are we together for instance when someone is valuable and decides to steal from his master let's say a thousand dollars five thousand dollars and run away whereas that man planned to give him an estate or to make him a shareholder of his company you see the kind of foolishness that many people do and he will run away and someone else will steal what he's told so you see it's two zero now he's back to square zero and he will be angry that they stole what he stole. 
lack of productivity and excellence i submit to you that church people need to be mentored to understand the value of excellence are we together now compromise on quality is prevalent especially among believers you give believers projects to handle and you will see all shades of compromises and we will cover everything in the name of jesus and using the guise of similarity of faith whether you give them jobs you give them contracts most believers do not want to bend over backward to deliver with excellence and then those who are in positions of authority and influence who are believers go through all kinds of pressure why would you not give your fellow believer this road why would you not give him this contract why would you not give him this one and at the end of it you will find out that it's the same believers that keep causing pain for so many people because of their lack of their lack of uh, uh, this thing i've had that kind of experience myself where you can trust people in the name of believers and say okay let me support you with this handle this project and it, it is a total mess that comes back mess with an entitlement mentality on top are we together now and then sometimes you are pushed you have to make do with unbelievers because they, they are, their basis for for relating with you is purely contractual and they know that if they compromise they have themselves to blame so they will give the highest level of excellence there is someone learning the absence you see believers produce something and they cannot go and package it well they will wrap it in one polythene and just write maybe jesus is lord on it now i'm not saying that is wrong and i'm not saying the statement but it's, it's a mockery the name you are putting there should not carry that kind of packaging and sometimes it costs next to nothing it's just ignorance because most times we are very proud we cannot bend over backwards to ask how can i make this happen we fall in the guise of i have the holy spirit the unbelievers don't have the holy spirit but they have a mind that is working and when it was time for moses to have knowledge god sent him to egypt for knowledge even though moses had a covenant with god when it had to do with power and results and anointing he didn't need egypt but when it had to do with the wisdom to understand the cosmos the same thing happened to joseph do you notice that when god wants to give his people secular enlightenment he will always send them to egypt are you learning now many believers are not excellent someone for instance will have a store or a shop and sit down and be claiming in the name of jesus i'll be the leading store you wake up by 10 o'clock and someone will be kind enough to call you and say our fellowship needs 30 cans of malt and say look I'm, I'm tired you drag yourself as a man as if you are pregnant and open the shop and then now argue and say i don't have change come back later on and by five o'clock you change and say i am going to church it's a flimsy reason flimsy excuse you cannot hire an apprentice because you want all the profit to yourself and yet there is somebody all around he has designed a system 24 hours is available he put Christian, Muslims, atheists all together. So when it's time for prayer, the other one is there making sure it happens. If it's time for... <laughs> Say productivity. Please shout it. Say excellence. excellence. We are very small-minded as believers and we think it does not matter because we compare ourselves from our little backgrounds and we just say oh i'm making this i'm making that oh i want to go into fishery i want to go into fish business and you just leave your fish in the bucket and keep calling people to come and buy it how many will will kings come will i come and reach out into a bucket or a, 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 you know Are we learning? Number four. What is the fourth key? The absence of strategic relationships. Please start that one. That is the major reason for the poverty of many. I submit to you. If I am to draw a pie chart, and represent all these points this one will take over 65 percent this one the reason why people are poor 
Listen, there are three things if you don't have, you will remain perpetually poor. Number one, value. If you don't have value, have relationships. If you don't have relationships, have character. If you don't have these three things, you have signed a contract with poverty forever. Yes, sir. If you lack value, you lack strategic relationships, you lack character, then you are forget about the blessing of the Lord being made manifest in your life. So number four, write please very quickly, the absence of strategic relationships. In John chapter five, popular scripture, reading from verse one to seven, verse, let's look at seven for emphasis. The, the man at Bethesda, Jesus asked the man, how come you have been so long here? Do you want to be made whole? And the man said, I have no man. That is my issue. Not I have no strength. At least among all the important folks, I seem to be better than others. But the man who will give me the leverage and his one year or one day translated to 38 years of stagnation because there was no man. He did not say, I have no skill. He did not say, I have no strength. He most likely was better than somebody. Do you know what it means for one day to become 38 years? And the simple reason is I have no man. I have no man. There was a crippled man who's had relationships and they came to Jesus' crusade insisting that that man will be healed. And when they found out that there was a crowd, they said, listen, we are not going back with this, our friend. He may not have the power to reach out to Jesus. He may not have the energy to shout, have mercy on me. But he had relationships and they tore the zinc. In other words, we would discuss with the owner of this venue later on. But as far as this man is concerned, not for our sake, they uncovered the roof, the Bible says. And Jesus called it faith. Not carelessness, not wickedness. He called it faith. That means relationships can enhance your faith. strategic relationships i submit to you ladies and gentlemen this is where unbelievers cheat believers hands down because we have not learned the value and the excellency of strategic relationship the average believer will not pay attention to invest in quality destiny defining relationships you know why because we we feel that we are immune with factors and systems of advantage like favor, like the Holy Spirit. And sometimes you hear us brag and say, I don't need any man. If you are saying that to describe the sovereign power of God, you are right. But if you are saying that to mean that on earth here, you do not need anybody, go and think again. That God had to send an angel to come and carefully discuss with a woman to make her womb available for Jesus to arrive. Look at all the men that played strategic roles in his life. From the prophets, Simeon the prophet, Anna the prophetess, Simon of Cyrene, Joseph of Arimathea, the owner of the donkey that he, 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 he carried for triumphant entry. How could Jesus do without men? As far as he was upon the earth, he needed men. As God, he may not need men, but as a man, he needed men. Let me remind you again that I have taught you that all blessings come from God through men to men. Please say it after me. All blessings come from God through men to men. If God says yes, and on the earth men say no, your yes will remain in the realm of the spirit. I guarantee you. There are people today who may not have as much value. When you look at the level of the financial blessing in their lives, it looks unfair because realizing that they may not have so much value, they turn to relationships and they master the art of bringing strategic relationships. There is a difference between strategic and parasitic relationships. I'm talking about strategic relationships. Hallelujah. If someone comes to unduly oppress you, you do not know anybody in the police force who can help you. If someone comes to speak, you do not know any, no, it's wrong, it's dangerous. It can keep any believer poor. 
respectfully speaking there are men and women of god today there are business people very easy things cannot be done you want to register a company and there is no lawyer that believes in you who can say i love you so much you just bring what is needed my own part as a reward i leave it because you did not pay attention building relationships relationships are not gifts they are investments waiting for people to just like you for nothing is a waste of time you've heard me say it here unbelievers a man who is a billionaire will leave america to nigeria to come and celebrate a rich man's two-year-old son let's be honest is the two-year-old son his mate and you see him playing with a baby baby how are you and the baby is not even saying anything and because he was represented there in that birthday celebration they will discuss something that will translate to millions and billions of dollars while believers are there fasting calling the man's name on the ground writing it on paper and say except it's not my god you must give me this job someone has left and is there represented no 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 shouting carelessly let me say this listen 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 please make sure as you listen to me you behave yourself because sometimes when we get excited we can say all kinds of things this is a house of discipline so celebrate the word but don't start shouting tell them or misbehave please let me say this as a disclaimer we are very disciplined people in the name of Jesus is someone learning relationships I have learned and I have seen in my life that who hates you does not matter but ladies and gentlemen in this wicked world who loves you who loves you matters so oh. Esther you will remain in Shushan until you have an uncle that can present you to the king but if the king loves you you can become queen immediately Joseph you can remain in the prison even though you have the ability to interpret dreams if the king does not love you you remain a prisoner there we live in an arrogant world that trivializes men what is there i have god i don't need any man that is true there is a there is a place for that when you are describing the sovereignty of god but when you are dealing with the dynamics of the cosmos, please do not listen to that wrong teaching that you do not need men. Let me tell you, men are so important huh, that there are gatekeepers who even though they are not believers, you cannot cast them. There are men that are uncastable. If God wants you to pass through that gate, he will grant them favor with you. But as far as they are concerned, praying them away is a waste of time. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, is that in your Bible? He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. There are some people, if they are not at peace with you, you will go to heaven, but you will suffer on this earth. It's the truth. This is what some of our loved ones did not know. This is what some of our great people, as I'm talking to you now, some of you came from families that that were mad by poverty i am showing you that these were the rules that our loved ones broke when other people were building relationships they were there gossiping and ignoring people and saying how can this small boy be rich instead of you to be close to him because he can help you now the small boy is the one who can pay for your medical bills and unfortunately every old person around you does not have money what do you now do respectfully there are men and women of god who have insulted members and shouted at people if you are rich you carry all your money and they insult them whereas there's building project coming whereas there are all kinds of things coming then when it is now the time you say if you are if you have money in this church and you are not giving and the people say no 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 you insulted us i go you insult me and insult everything i have so as i go i go with everything i have relationships you come to church, you ignore the person sitting at your left and right. They say, turn to your neighbor, you are frowning simply because you do not even know whether that person is the answer to your tomorrow's prayer, not even today. You see, let me tell you the truth. Please look up. We live in a world where we like glitz and glamour. Once you see someone sit close to you, and there's nothing wrong, everybody has their, their you know, the way they see life. 
but some of the greatest gifts and the greatest helpers will come in packages that you will need your spirit man to help you discern someone may be seated close to you he may not have money but he's the one who works for the one you are looking for and let me tell you Nigerians we know this the person who is an aide of a wealthy man is more is more um, in a position of honor and opportunity than even some of the directors in the company because that is the one who will serve him tea that is the one who will serve him bread and he can smuggle your issue to his ears quickly whereas somebody is still saying well minuted they sign it there and throw it away and pray that the wind evil wind does not push it from that table to the trash as funny as what I'm saying is there are many of us right now the answer to your prayer is what you are hearing you have ignored many people nobody is worth your commitment we have this sense of self-sufficiency no it does not matter you are making a mistake a big mistake I'm not teaching human worship please don't get me wrong there are people because of the abundance and because of the way they have suffered they will want to subjugate people and turn them to slaves please this is not what I'm teaching but I am telling you that in the lifting of men even financially men have a role to play I've asked you this question many times let me ask you one more time think don't talk is there someone in your life right now who you can call for help and the person will help you without thinking twice just think is there someone right now as you are watching me let's assume for instance that you needed let me use a realistic figure maybe two hundred thousand five hundred thousand a million naira is there someone in your life that has been helped by god who can say for your sake i'm on my way to your house if there is none I guarantee you you are sitting on a time bomb because according to the law of time and chance according to the law of life sooner or later even if you are Jesus you may not be able to carry the cross alone powerful Jesus needed men to help him it is foolishness to believe that for the rest of your life you will not need any man no hallelujah investing in relationships may look costly you will bend over backwards it will sting your ego but the profit that comes from that investment is unbelievable do you know that there are people who do not exactly have work but they are never broke because they are around strategic relationships they greet they hang around when the meeting is happening they are standing outside their job is to just support are you tired okay just bribe me orange quickly and they run and you will think that they are wasting time except that when it's time to share everything even if it's the crumbs from the table it will get to them one day someone will just look at them and say you've been very effective come and take this car and that's it come and take this house and that's it don't expect people to pay attention to you when you have not communicated honor and you have not listen every man's need is his point of contact learn this every man's need is his point of contact if i am thirsty the person who brings me water is the person i pay attention to for that moment are we together many believers do not invest in strategic relationships and then they want astronomical returns for nothing is fraud are we together that means God loves everybody, but you don't invest in your relationship with him. I'm using God since it's universal. You don't invest in your relationship, in worship, in prayer, in word study, and then you suddenly want to have the same ministerial opportunities, the same access to the great. It does not work that way. Time is the seed for intimacy. When you sow time, you get back a harvest of intimacy. It's only a foolish person who will bring everybody into your home, your inner chamber. Watch this now. In many houses, you have 
you know maybe the veranda outside you have the living room maybe a number of the living rooms and there are private parlors you have bedrooms there are people who if they come they are going to wait outside you don't hate them but that is the level of the relationship they have not made the kind of investment you you suspect that it will be a risk to expose them to your living room there are others who may come and you can leave them there but do you know there are people who can even come to your house and while you are in your kitchen they can enter your room is that true and sit on the bed and be talking to you and you are not afraid because of the depth of relationship i ask you one more time who in your life have you invested so much in them that they look at you and say over my dead body that they hear that this person's house just went down it was raised down by fire and they say while we are discussing where you will be i've paid for a house for you a three-bedroom flat relocate with your family and stay there before we know what is done i'm praying for you that this wisdom key will work in your life I'm praying for you that in the name of Jesus you will not make the mistake that those who have gone ahead of you have made yeah. are we together the absence of strategic relationships I have no man to speak for me I am skilled I am gifted I'm an IT consultant I am gifted I can do this I'm a real estate um, you know expert I am this and that but there is no man to speak for me there is someone who can speak for you everywhere you must have the discernment to know them and you must have the 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 humility to invest in their lives the Bible says give a portion to seven and then to eight it says for you do not know the evil that will come upon the world in other words scatter your human relations investment you do not know who can be used by God to help you are we together one day you will see a weak woman that may not seem to have any power but you'll be surprised the kind of people who honor her and she can call someone and say please can you make this man a director mama do you trust him yes and that's it no interview no nothing number five are we learning the fifth reason why people are poor especially believers is bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment or the absence for an easy expression of spiritual empowerment many have not learned that there is a spiritual dimension to genuine lasting wealth there is a spiritual dimension i repeat to genuine lasting wealth it is called the power to prosper deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18 the bible says but thou shalt remember the lord your god for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day god can give men power to prosper God can give men power to prosper and many have rejected that grace many have rejected that impartation there is an anointing that comes upon a man that primes your mind in an unusual way to think coming up with witty inventions and ideas that anointing translates to favor attracting people attracting circumstances attracting opportunities the bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment and I'm happy you came to church tonight because you will not live without that grace in the name of Jesus I repeat that you will not live without that grace that that grace will come upon you the same way the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus it will mantle you that when you leave this place you will be able to define the kinds of anointings that are on your head in the name of Jesus can I give you the remaining two? Number six, the sixth reason why people are poor and remain poor and sadly may remain poor is impatience. The sixth impatience, Proverbs 13, 11. Impatience. Let's read together. One to read. Wealth gotten by vanity 
shall be diminished the bible says but he that gathered by labor shall increase let's read one more time wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished but he that gathered by labor one of the major reasons why people become poor is they want to become rich fast god gives speed but he does not rush men there is a difference between rushing and speed are we together the difference between rushing and speed is the same difference between throwing a thing up and allowing it grow when you throw a stone up or you throw a plant up imagine that i hold this flower now or a, a plant and i throw it up because i want it to be tall fast will it come down absolutely but if i water it and allow it to grow what happens that growth remains sustained and it remains sustained because it is connected to source there are many people who want to become rich overnight and don't get me wrong god can bless people and turn your your morning to to rejoicing overnight after an extended period of training it is the manifestation that is overnight not the training please listen when you hear somebody tells you i got blessed overnight find out the training process for instance the holy ghost came suddenly but the training was not suddenly three and a half years of training for a sudden manifestation of the spirit so you find someone in the school of wealth in the school of the spirit the school of kingdom prosperity for a long time and overnight god opens the doors but i assure you i'm i'm speaking especially to my generation because we have an obsession the moment it looks like you want things to happen very fast and many of us have mismanaged what god has given us and brought ourselves to perpetual penury do you know that the pressure to get rich fast can be an addiction look up please the same way you can be addicted uh, taking um, you know drugs uh, cocaine and all these kinds of things there are people who are addicted no matter what god gives them they want to see how they can make it fast and some is because of pressure because we use physical things around to define the presence of faith so if i see a jeep if i see a duplex some mansion somewhere i see you flashing designers all through most likely you have faith i have taught you it is not accurate serious people don't think like that are we together impatience say in the name of jesus i destroy the spirit of impatience yes sir and jesus Increase Luke 2 52. He grew, he increased in wisdom, he increased in stature, he increased in favor with God and with men. This is true for ministry, this is true for business, this is true for leadership, this is true for personal finance. There is the law of process as powerful. Watch this as powerful as the word incarnate was when he entered the womb of mary you would think jesus should develop in one week after all the father wants you know believers to be saved mary had to go through the natural course is that true of carrying a baby when elisha prophesied to the woman in shunem he said according to the time of life there are things that when God wants to help you, he will grant you patience to endure. He will not necessarily fast track the process. Because there are things, the lesson you learn on the journey is greater than what you obtain. In fact, it is what maintains what you obtain. So the Bible says, wealth that is gotten by vanity. Unfortunately, there are many people today who are wealthy. They cannot defend their wealth because it did not come by growth. So they mismanage it. You find young people mismanaging their parents' wealth and inheritance in one year, two years. You find out that, a, you know, a wealth estate that was built over 20, 30, 40 years diminishes in less than two years because they handed it over to children who did not have the mental constructs to maintain it. Please refer to my message, Redefining Inheritance. Listen to it very carefully. 
redefining inheritance i teach there that there are five kinds of inheritance that every father every leader every superior must transfer to those who are coming and if you don't you have destroyed the generation coming money and physical things is the least and the fifth of that inheritance the first and the highest inheritance you can give any man is your convictions your convictions is transferable that is what made you you now in in africa we believe that loving children means giving them access to anything anyhow when they want without training after all is my child so we do not have third fourth fifth generation there are very few regions in africa and nigeria that can perpetuate wealth because you have a lot of young people who are careless they just tumbled into millions and billions and they waste their parents estates there are people who when the owners the people who started that wealth journey as soon as they die the, the entire wealth does not even reach two years imagine if the prodigal's father the prodigal son's father handed over his entire estate to that foolish boy he, he, still, he still would have finished i hope you know that i'm not calling him foolish as an insult it's a description he was foolish look at the things that he did as soon as he got the money he ran away he lost relationship with the father there is no record of him contacting the father to say how are you i'm away but just to let you know you are still my father and i appreciate you you see that he left and there were wicked friends that were waiting for him already and they started spending the money question where were the friends when he was with the pigs there are friends called friends for food I resist them from coming to your life yeah. what are they called friends for food as soon as it arrives here they come as soon as the contract arrives here they come <laughs> you know I pray for you you will be surprised I just did not tell you but I know I know that it if not for my prayer you will not get that contract and then they now say oh they hear a siren and say police are they, what are they coming here for on their way going the bible says a friend is made for adversity a friend that cannot stand with you through is not a friend indeed is someone learning unfortunately some of us those are the kinds of friends we like because they have mastered the art of singing your praises they sing you to penury you are lazy they still clap for you you are unserious, they still clap for you. Prayerless, they still clap for you. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.